Starting a server for Minecraft 1.19.1. That's exactly what we're going to be going over in this video. However, first and foremost, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server. It's not going to be up all the time. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. Speaking of your computer, it's also going to have to be a decent computer because you need to be able to host this server and play Minecraft at the same time. If you can't, you could run into some issues. Your computer's going to lag and your server's going to lag and not be able to run as well. Lastly, this server is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust. That's because whoever gets the IP address to this server can not only do things like DDoS you and hit your internet offline and make you unable to use your internet, but also figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's very, very important that you only give the IP address of the server to your friends, your family, like I said, people you can trust. However, what if you don't have a good computer? What if you don't want to have to worry about internet security and DDoSing and, you know, people being able to find out where you live? What if you just want the easiest way possible to start a Minecraft server? Well, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. We love this Apex so much that we host all of our Minecraft servers on Apex Minecraft hosting. And at Apex, they handle the hardware, they handle the security, they handle everything. All you have to do is join your server. You can also add plugins, mods, and mod packs super easily, with Apex having over 200 mod packs with one-click installation. So nevertheless, if you do want the easiest, simplest way to start a Minecraft server, check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex to start your server where you don't have to worry about hardware, you don't have to worry about lag, and you don't have to worry about security. And on top of that, you can make it public, you can make it private, as the server is meant to be up 24 hours a day and give you full control. Nevertheless, let's go ahead though and jump on into this video if you want to start a server on your own computer without using Apex. To do that, you want to go to the second link in the description down below. And that's going to take you here. This is our in-depth guide on how to make a Minecraft server in 1.19.1, and this goes over everything in a text format. However, once you're here, if you're following along with this video, click on the Download Minecraft button. When you click on that, it's going to take you off to Minecraft's official download page for the server here, where you want to go ahead and click on the Minecraft underscore server 1.19.1.jar. It's just this little link right here. Click on that, and the download will begin in the bottom left. You may need to keep this file on Google Chrome or save it in the server screen on Mozilla Firefox. Either way, it's 100% safe because this is Minecraft's official website, so don't even worry about it. This file is 100% safe. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and minimize our browser here, and then we want to create a new folder on our desktop. I'm going to go ahead and right-click, create a new folder. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it Minecraft 1.19.1 server. You can name it literally anything. You just name it Minecraft server. Doesn't matter what you name this. Then we want to go ahead and move the file we downloaded into this folder. So where is that file? It's going to be in our downloads folder. We can get to our downloads folder by clicking the little windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen, or bottom center of your screen if you're on Windows 11. And yes, this tutorial does fully work on Windows 11. Type in downloads, you have this downloads file folder here. Open that up, and then in here we have the server.jar. Drag and drop this into the Minecraft 1.19.1 server folder you created here, right? So you want to drag and drop the server.jar into this folder. Now if we open up this folder, there it is. There is the server.jar. Now at this point, you should just be able to double click on this and it will go ahead and get you some files. So if I double click on it, as you can see for me, it generates those files. For you, if it doesn't generate those files, that's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix that. To fix it, you need to download and install Java 17. Java 17 is required for Minecraft 1.19.1 servers. And guess what? We have a complete in-depth guide on getting Java 17. It literally goes through everything, how to download it, how to install it, confirm that it's working, how to troubleshoot any issues you have. It is super in-depth and it will allow you to get Java 17 up and running for your Minecraft server. You also need it for Minecraft mods, so if you ever plan on getting Minecraft mods in the future, guess what? You'll have Java 17 already set up for that as well. So, awesome stuff there. Go through this tutorial, and you should be able to double-click on that file. But some of you won't be able to. Some of you will get Java 17, which you have to get first, and then you'll still need to run the jar fix. And you can find the jar fix in the description down below. It's an in-depth guide to get a simple program, three steps here, to get the jar fix. And what the jar fix does is it takes the jar files to your computer and links them to Java 17. So step one, get Java 17. Step two, run the jar fix. When you run the jar fix, it's going to allow you to double click on that file like we did, right? Just double click right here and it will go ahead and download all the stuff that it needs. So just double click right here and it will go ahead and start downloading everything you need for your server. And the jar fix is what allows that 
that to happen. Nevertheless though, once you've done that, you should have these files. Specifically, you should have eula.txt. Go ahead and open this up with Notepad here, and then in Notepad, assuming you agree to the ULA here, which we do, go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then go ahead and do File, Save, and boom, we have now agreed to the ULA. It's also important to note that you shouldn't have any spaces after this. For example, if that's there, this won't work, right? So we're gonna go ahead again, File, Save, and now if we double click on the server.jar, this is going to work. It's going to go ahead and generate and start our Minecraft server. Now at this point, you can join your server and I'll show you how to do that because I think it's important to test the server when you're at this point. However, your friends cannot join the server yet. And in order for your friends to join, we will need to port forward. We'll cover that later. Nevertheless though, let's let this server start up. I'm gonna open up Minecraft 1.19. Dot one, and then we'll go ahead and join it. So here we are, Minecraft 119 is open. As you can see, our server is started over here. You'll know it's finished starting when it says done, right? That's how you'll know, it's pretty simple. It just says done in the console. This is what the console is. Now what we wanna do is click on multiplayer. If you get this kind of warning here, just go ahead and click do not show again and click proceed. However, I'm not gonna click do not show again because we do tutorials here, so I wanna be able to show that moving forward. But nevertheless, click direct connection here, and then we're gonna go ahead and do server address, local, host, right like so. Local host, boom. And then go ahead and click join server. So you're the only person, by the way, that's going to be able to join your server using the local host IP address, but it's a great way to test at this point if you can join your server. So we type local host here, hit join server. We'll see on the left hand side. Boom. I pop on in and we are now joined. Loading terrain. Awesome stuff. So we are now in game. We're on Minecraft 1.19.1. And we're good to go. At this point, we could play on this server. This is great if you want to do a test server or something like that, or just want a server to where you could test plugins, things like that. You can do that here. However, what if we want to allow our friends to join this server? Well, in order to do that, we need to close out of Minecraft here. And by the way, I always like to uh, make some make a mark on the land. That way we know when we get back in here, it's the same server. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom. Now we've got four dirt blocks in our inventory. That village is over there. And we've got this kind of trench we've dug out. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and close out of Minecraft. Minecraft. We're going to disconnect from the server and close out of Minecraft. We're also going to stop the server. To properly stop your server, always type right here in this text box, stop, right like so, S-T-O-P, and then hit enter. That's going to stop the server correctly, save everything, and that way you don't have to worry about any data loss when you're stopping your server. At this point though, we can also close out of the Minecraft server folder here because it is time to port forward. To do that, we wanna go ahead and open up the CMD. So click in the top left hand of my screen, bottom left of your screen or bottom server screen on Windows 11. Again, this works on Windows 11. Type in CMD, you have this command prompt here, open this up, and then in the command prompt, what we wanna do is type IP -con -f -i -g. IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. Then we get a ton of different stuff here. But we're looking for two specific things. The first is our IPv4 address. For me, that is right here. The second is our default gateway. Now for you, you may have two default gateways. You may have one on the first line that's a bunch of numbers and letters, and then one on the second line that's just numbers. You wanna go with the one that's just numbers. So let's go ahead and make note of both of these in a notepad document. So we're gonna go ahead and type in our IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.1 one five and then our default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1 and again we can see this is the ipv4 address here and this is the default gateway make note of those you will need both of them during the port forward process so make sure you note them down here let's go ahead and close out now of command prompt we've got the numbers we needed and we what we want to do is open up our browser then in our browser we want to open up a brand new tab right here where you would normally type in like you know youtube.com the breakdown.xyz right here up here at the top we want to go ahead and type in our default gateway so in my case that was 192.168.1.1 so we're going to type that right up here at the top 192.168.1.1 Hit enter and boom, it opens up a login box. Now for you, it might have a good GUI, right? It might be like a nice GUI in the center of your screen. It might be like mine, just pop in from the top. It might pop in from the bottom. It might kind of be just like a pop up in the center of the screen but you will have some sort of a login box up here. In this login box, you're gonna enter in your router's username and password. How do you find this? Well, we have an in-depth guide on our website on how to find your router's password. It goes through basically different methods that you use. I recommend starting with method one and then working your way all the way down through method five.
five to find your router's password. Most people, by the way, find it by method three or four, and then you're good to go. You have your router's password and you can come back and log in. By the way, this is different from your Wi-Fi's password. So if you know your Wi-Fi password, unfortunately, this is going to be different. And that's why this dedicated article is here and exists. So nevertheless, once you've got your router's username and password, come back over here and enter it in. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and log into our router. There we go. When I log into my router, it's probably gonna look completely different from your router. I have an Orbi Netgear router, but if you don't, but you probably don't, that is perfectly fine because we have an in-depth guide on how to port forward on any router. It's in the description down below and it goes over all the top most popular routers out there today and how to port forward on them. That is Netgear, that is Asus, that is Cisco, that is Charter, that is Verizon, all those different routers and so many more are in this list. Linksys, I probably missed five or six, honestly. It is super in-depth. We also have this guide down here as well that can be helpful, but this video at the top, I would recommend watching it even if you your router isn't on that specific list because most routers are similar to other routers. Netgear routers are similar to Cisco. Cisco is similar to Linksys. So because of that, you are going to pick up the ideas and the things that you need to know when you go into your router. That way you can look around and click around to find port forwarding. Now for me, it is in advanced and then it is in the advanced tab again. So for me, it's in advanced, advanced. For you, it could be an advanced port forwarding. It could be in a port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in apps and gaming. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in NAT port forwarding, NAT port forwarding. It could also be in the administration tab, the security tab, or the advanced security tab. So, so many different options there, and it might be in something different from those, but hopefully that'll give you kind of what to look for. Admin, advanced, security, apps and gaming, things like that are what you're looking for. But overall, you're looking for port forwarding. So for me, that's an advanced, advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. So here is basically the port forwarding setup for my router. For you, you may have like a big list of just empty boxes. That's perfectly fine as well. But for me, I need to add custom service or add a port forward going to open up this dialog box here. And then in this, you'll actually notice that everything else is very similar to you, right? Even if you just have a big table with a bunch of empty boxes, go with the first box and you'll notice that the columns are the same as what I have here. So service name or service ID, name, ID, identification, whatever it's called on your router, we're going to name this Minecraft because this is for a Minecraft server. For protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. You want to make sure both of these are selected. If you can't do both for whatever reason, do this port forward twice. Leave all the other information the same and do it once for TCP and once for UDP. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and then move on to our port. Anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, is going to be 25565. So external port, 25565. Port one, port two, first port, second port. Doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be 25565. So external port, boom, 25565. Internal port is going to be 25565. No matter what it is, you want to make sure that your ports are always 25565 because that's the port that Minecraft uses. So make sure those are entered in there. 25565 is the port you are forwarding. Last but not least for the internal IP address or device IP address, this is going to be the IPv4 address we got earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.15. Now, if yours just has a list of devices, like a drop-down box here, which is very similar to what we have here, you want to select the device you're using to start your server. So in my case, that's desktop right here. As you can see, the IP address is the IPv4 address, 192.168.1.15. So we can go ahead and select it there as well, right? So if you have device drop down box, select it there. If you don't, go ahead and enter your IPv4 address, right like so. So either way works, perfectly fine. Finally, we can go ahead and click apply. Now, some of you will have an external or outside IP address listed. If that's the case, that's okay. We're gonna show you how to find that because you need it no matter what. The external or outside public IP is how your friends are going to join your server. That's the IP address your friends will use. And you can find it at the link in the description down below, what's my IP address. This is a page on our website where you will see your IP address. Now for me, all you can see is 177, but we've also blocked out the county, region, city, latitude and longitude, all of that as well, because this is what you can find with your IP address. And this is why this server is only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. Should you want to host a server and be able to make it public, that's why Apex is here. Click that, go start a server with Apex Minecraft hosting where you get a server up and running and it can be public or private and you don't have to worry about security or your hardware. It just works. 
awesome. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and highlight and copy this, and we can go ahead and come back over to our router. If you had an external IP address, you could paste that in there and then save your port forward. Most people won't have that though, but nevertheless, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser. We want to start our server, so let's go ahead and open up this folder here and double click on the server.jar to start the server. We also want to go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.19 because obviously once the server started, we want to join it with 1.19. So let's go ahead and do that. So open up Minecraft 1.19. Our server is starting. You can see done there. Let's join our Minecraft server. So here we are. Minecraft is open. We can again go to multiplayer, click proceed, and then click direct connection. You can also add this server, but for now we're just going to do direct connection. Now, what we want to do is type in our IP address here. I just copied and pasted it right there, and as you can see, the 177 at the end. The rest of it is blacked out because we don't want you to know the entire IP. You saw you can get the latitude and longitude coordinates of where someone lives from the IP, so we want to keep that private, but you can see 177 there. So, nonetheless, the IP address is typed in. If you go ahead and click Join Server, you'll see on the left-hand side here, we will join on in. There will be some, like, white out over there as well because that's my real IP address, so some of that is blocked out. However, for the most part, you can see that Nix Games has joined the game right there. However, you may not be able to join your server using your public IP address. The reason for that is because some ISPs don't actually enjoy you connecting back to yourself because that's what we're doing here. Your computer is sending out a connection to the internet and then it's coming back to your own computer. It's a little weird and some ISPs don't like that. So in that case, that's okay. You can always join using that local host we did like we did earlier. Your friends though will always join via your public IP address. So that's what's important. If your friends can't join via your public IP address, well, it could be a few issues. One, your port forward may not be correct, so go double check that make sure that is done correctly. However, it could also be that Windows Defender is not allowing Java. So as you can see here, Windows Defender needs to allow Java through it in order to allow your friends to join. We have an in-depth guide on this. It's in the description down below. It's helped over 200,000 people get Windows Defender set up to allow their Minecraft servers to work. It's super simple. It's most likely what the issue is if your friends can't join via your public IP address, and this tutorial will solve it. We also have a guide in the description down below on how to fix a broken Minecraft server. This goes over so many different issues that you could possibly have with your server, how to fix them, how to correct them, and how to get them basically taken care of on your server. From things like adding RAM to even doing things like adding plugins, fixing plugins issues, fixing mod issues, it's all covered in this video. It has helped 36,000 people with their server issues. And last but not least, we do have the how to add RAM to your Minecraft server. Should you want to add more RAM to a server, this is a guide on how to do that. It goes through all of it in depth on how to add more RAM and how to get things set up for that should you want to do so. Nevertheless, finally though, you have your Minecraft server up and running here. Your friends can join it. If you do have any questions about starting your Minecraft server, let us know in the comment section down below. We are more than willing to help you out fix common issues and all that stuff. Plus, if you report an issue and it is a common issue, we can fix those issues in future tutorials and that helps so, so much. I love these like new villages. I know they've been around since like 114, but like it's so cool how the villages are different per biome. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible Minecraft content, including how to add plugins and mods to your server. If you want to do that, we are have amazing videos coming up on how to do just that for your servers. So be sure to subscribe for that. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. We'll see you in the next video and I'm out. Peace.